Hi, this is Mike Schofield with Dine on Avionics. We are about a week away from heading down to Lakeland, Florida for Sun and Fun 2010. And we are probably within a week or two of being what we call feature complete on Skyview firmware version 2.0. Now what that means is we'll be at the point that that all of the features that we're intending on shipping in 2.0 are done and then we head into the last uh, hall of of testing to to really polish the product up before we release it uh, you know into the into the, the wild or on our website so what that means is some of the things that you may see here if you know you're looking really carefully may not be representative of the final uh, version 2.0 release so um, if you see things that maybe look a little bit strange or or look incomplete they probably are but by and large the major features are here and we want to demonstrate those um, in this video for those of you that won't be at Sun and Fun uh, to see them in person so first of all what I have here are two screens that are networked together running the latest 2.0 um, internal software and they are connected to a single ADA HARS one of the, the core capabilities that is coming along in version 2.0 is more robust failure handling capabilities. So when you have everything connected via the Skyview network and something should fail, whether it's a screen or an ADA HARS in a multiple ADA HARS system, it doesn't affect the rest of the system. So if I kill the power to that screen, uh, you might see on the on the remaining screen things blink for just a fraction as it of a second as it as it you know figures everything out. But what you'll notice is I haven't really done anything or I haven't done anything at all. I haven't had to reconfigure or or play with any settings. Um, and the single ADA HAR still runs that still runs the attitude indicator on the remaining screen. So if I plug this guy back in and give him a few seconds to boot up, you'll see that. Um, I'll be able to do the same thing with the other screen in just a moment. So again, Skyview uh, systems or screens boot in um, you know, seconds, well under a minute, well under 30 seconds actually. Um, so we're back up and running and again, once the screen comes online, everything synchronizes. And similarly, if I pull this other screen, everything still works. And so the, the big win here with the more robust failure handling capability that exists in version 2 and beyond is that once you have everything connected and communicating via the Skyview network, um, you don't have to think about how things are connected or, or um, a master and slave relationship uh, between different devices like you might see in, in other avionics and even some of our other products like our D100 series. Um, everything is just designed to work. If a screen fails, everything just works. If you have multiple ADA HARSes and one of them fails, everything still works. You still have flight instruments. Um, so that's a, that's a real win for, for our customers. The other two really big features that we're premiering in version 2.0 of the Skyview firmware are HSI and Autopilot. So the HSI can use data from any serial GPS or nav radio source. So more specifically that's going to mean anything with NMEA output uh, in terms of GPS's or aviation output. Uh, that's mostly the Garmin 400 and 430 series. And on the nav radio side, anything that output serial, and practically speaking, that's the Garmin SL30. We will have an Air Inc. 429 converter, um, an actual physical converter, that we'll be releasing um, in the future. That will enable the Air Inc. 429 capability so that you can interface with, um, usually it's a 430 with... Uh, with both the radio and the GPS coming from the Airing 429 that lets you get the uh, VOR and glide slope from a 430. It also lets you fly the, the WAS uh, GPS, VNAV, um, and LPV approaches uh, that come out of the 430 via the Airing 429. So on the Skyview screen, uh, this is the, the, the home menu. And to bring up any of the HSI information, once you have it all configured in the setup, you just hit the PFD button. 
and then you'll see we've got bearing one nav source and bearing two. And so you can cycle through the different nav sources just by hitting nav source. So I only have one hooked up right now. And so you can see there's your CDI and then your, you know, to from, it's saying GPS one. There are a few more informational items that aren't yet implemented, so you're not seeing them here. Uh, that's going back to, um, you know, us, our, this firmware not quite being feature complete yet at the time of this filming. If I pull up uh, bearing one, you can see that the bearing directly to that waypoint is, um, you know, slightly off and to the right, and that makes sense because the CDI is deflected, you know, to the right. Um, right now, if I bring up bearing two, since there's only that one source, it just duplicates it. It has, um, um, you know, if, if we had more than one source, it would it would point somewhere else to that other source. And of course, like any HSI, as you as you you know turn as you adjust heading, the you know it, it turns with the uh, with the DG. And finally, we have autopilot. So right now you're looking at the autopilot menu. And I should mention that um, just like the D10 and D100 series, the Skyview autopilot can fly magnetic heading, GPS ground track, and any horizontal nav source uh, from a you know, connected and compatible nav radio or GPS. And then just like the D100 series, it can hold altitude and also change altitude and a, a new addition to the Skyview Autopilot is the ability to select in real time and whenever you want the vertical speed at which the Autopilot will climb onto or descend onto an altitude target. So rounding out the feature set we've got the 180 degree turn capability and we've uh, also got control wheel steering, uh, trim sensing and enunciation on the pitch axis and, um, and more to come in the future. Um, some of the more advanced things that uh, you'll see coming from the, uh, the Dyne on Autopilot are our vertical nav, um, and, you know, glide slope. Uh, that will be a little further out in the future. Let me give you a brief tour of what the Autopilot looks like on Skyview. So up top we have a status bar. You can see that, it's, uh, that, that right now the Autopilot, if it were engaged, would be looking for heading 274 and would be using the vertical speed bug to climb onto an altitude, and the altitude is the altitude bug. So it would climb 200 feet per minute onto 8,800 feet. So down below, these are the, this is the autopilot menu. From the, from the home menu, you just hit AP, single button push, and you have all of your autopilot controls. So this label here that says heading off, and this label here that says altitude off are the two um, arm buttons, and then the mode labels next to them bring you into a menu to set which mode each of those axes are flying. So if I just wanted to engage um, heading and altitude, I can just do that right now. I ignore the add power, that's just an artifact of being in a, in a demonstrator mode right now. Um, now you can see up top that the autopilot, the green autopilot uh, flag has has popped up, and it's pointing both towards the, the pitch axis and towards the horizontal axis, and that means that both of those modes are engaged. Now, if I were to turn them off, that autopilot flag will flash for a few seconds to let you know that it's disengaged, and then it'll it'll burn out. So, if I was, if let's re-engage the autopilot, and now go to the horizontal mode selection and switch to nav. So now you can see that the horizontal mode is indicating that's in nav, that it's in nav mode. It's following uh, the GPS source. The altitude mode, which is which also has uh, a couple of selections, uh, can be toggled to choose whether. The, it's follow, when engaged, it's following the, the vertical speed that you have bugged or a preset vertical speed for climb or descent that you've set up in, in the autopilot setup menu.